Hey everyone, we're going to continue uh, discussing and working with inheritance. And so the next topics that we're going to cover in this video are going to be inheritance uh, and how it works with constructors. We're going to show you how to prevent a method from being overridden. So in the last uh, uh, video, we overrode methods, but a lot of times um, you might not want your method to be overridden. You might not want a more specific version of a method so you can prevent that from happening. And we're going to introduce an access modifier uh, which is protected uh, and how it works with inheritance. So uh, introduce a new access modifier which is protected. And protected members meaning uh, protected fields or protected methods. Uh, so let's start with inheritance and constructors. Let's go ahead and create a new class and for this one we'll have a vehicle and uh, a car which is a vehicle. So car will extends car extends vehicle so that creates our inheritance and let's have a field and uh, we'll say vehicle color and a number of wheels so a vehicle has a color and a number of wheels And let's go ahead and generate getters and setters. And we're not going to touch the constructor yet um, because that's what the first thing we want to talk about is inheritance and constructors. Um, but realize right now there is uh, an automatic constructor there for us, which is the default constructor, which looks like so. So this is our default constructor and these are not fields these are setters and getters for private fields got a typo of vehicle v e h i c l e now that works. Okay. Um, so let's say we go ahead and write an overloaded constructor for a vehicle. And let's accept a. I can use my uh, generate constructors using fields tool here. And so this is our overloaded constructor. It accepts the color and the number of wheels. You can see there's this call to super, which uh, calls the parent class constructor. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But it, it sets the fields equal to the parameter variables. Uh, now in our car, so let's just say, let's say we didn't code our default constructor. And, and this is no longer overloaded. This is just a two param constructor. So let's go ahead and car. Right away, we see that car errors out. It says the implicit super constructor vehicle is undefined for the default constructor. Basically, it says, hey, we, the only way we can create a, a vehicle, uh, which a car is a vehicle, uh, is by using this two param constructor. So if we're going to create a car, we need a car that at least has two parameters, um, which will be. Uh, the color and the number of wheels. So string color int num wheels and let's say a, a car also has a private field because it's a more specific uh, than a vehicle. Um, let's say a, a car has a manufacturer or a make, public, uh, private, excuse me, private string make.
now you can see uh, what the current error message is saying. It says implicit super uh, constructor vehicle is undefined. So it's basically saying, hey, there's an automatic call to the no arg super constructor. So this is essentially calling the parent class constructor with no arguments. And that's implicitly happening, which is causing an error because it doesn't exist. Yeah. There is no super constructor with no uh, parameters. Uh, so what we have to do is we're going to call this super constructor, pass it the color and the number of wheels. Now it's working, right? We're calling the parent class constructor passing in the color up the inheritance chain, passing the number of wheels up the inheritance chain. And we can set the make equal to the make that's passed in. Okay, so that's working with constructors and inheritance. Um, to kind of take a few steps back, even before I had this, let me comment this out instead of deleting it. Before I had this, uh, you could see the error basically saying the same thing that a super constructor vehicle is undefined. So if we went ahead and created that public vehicle, so this is again reinserting the default constructor and if I could type, we wouldn't get error messages as frequently. So now I've got a no art constructor. Look, this now goes away, right? Because we can create a vehicle without passing it a color and a number of wheels. Um, let me go ahead and generate setters and getters for the make. And let's let's demonstrate how we would uh, how we could work with this now. Let me go ahead and uncomment out. So we've got uh, a constructor for car. Let's create a no arg default constructor. And this is a three param constructor for a car. And now we can create our cars and our vehicles in a variety of ways. Let's just start with a car. Uh, my car equals new car, right? So we can create a car without any information in it. Car, your car equals new car. And a car uh, has a color, a number of wheels, and a make. So I said it, but I didn't pay attention. Color, number of wheels, make. So let's say you have a red, it's got four wheels, and it's a Jeep, right? So then you can use the uh, my car dot set individually, or you can use the constructor. So the color, let's see, my car is a blue set number of wheels uh, for some reason I have six wheels on my car my car dot set make and I don't I don't know what type of a car has six wheels so I asked uh, one of my, my students here and he tells me a mercedes-benz mercedes-benz what is it g63 six by six has six wheels so apparently this is my car that I'm driving your car has that information there so we can use the mutators or we can use the constructor which is what this demonstration was using a constructor with no args or using one with args um, and then inside of car we could generate a two string generate two string using all fields um, so this will say the cars make and I'm also going to in vehicle generate a two string edit let's see 
generate two string and vehicle, vehicle color, number of wheels. Return super two string. So we're going to call the parent two string in the car and also have uh, the make. So in our demonstration, system out print line my car, system out print line your car. And obviously there's an automatic two string call here on both of these. So the first one is blue, six wheels, and the Mercedes Benz. The next one is red, four wheels, and it is a Jeep. Well, the next uh, topic is uh, how can we prevent a method from being overridden? And there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do this. Um, when you when you design a class um, and you let someone inherit it, they can write, they can essentially rewrite your method uh, if they overwrite it. And, and so that could introduce bugs, uh, it could introduce something you don't want uh, in that particular method. So there are scenarios, again, in, in the real world where you want to say, hey, this is the, the last version of this method, you cannot overwrite it. Uh, it kind of uh, is locked down at that point uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, back in a previous example, if I open up my insect uh, method called move, and if you remember Bumblebee overrode move, right? So here we have a, a, met, uh, a class that extends insect, um, yet... Uh, well, and it overrides the parent method move. If we don't want to allow that, basically all we want this method to be able to do at any point in time, to say the insect goes forward for three seconds, uh, we can mark our method as final. And with this keyword, we are saying, hey, you cannot override uh, this method. And as soon as we do that, you can see in both Bumblebee and Grasshopper, which were prior uh, previously overriding uh, the move method we get compiler errors and they those compiler errors simply say cannot override the final method from insect uh, along that same uh, theory then if you have a class that you want to be the bottom of the inheritance chain you do not want the class to be overridden <coughs> uh, which if I go back to my inheritance demo um, done with final keyword on the method. We already demonstrated that. How can we prevent a class from being overridden? And it's done with the same uh, keyword final. So let me go back in into my insect and I'll get rid of the keyword final on the method so the compiler errors are fixed. And let me mark uh, insect as final. So, you know, maybe there was a more generic classes above insect that we had to extend uh, some other pretend class here. And, and for whatever reason, we want insect to be the bottom of the hierarchy. We mark the class as final. And then you can see a new compiler error. Bumblebee cannot subclass the final class insect. So the keyword final on a class is going to say, hey, this is the last class in the hierarchy. We cannot um, inherit from it. So let's get rid of that. And in my inheritance demo, prevent a class from being overridden, done with final keyword on the class header. This is done on the method header. And uh, the last concept that we're going to talk about today is the protected access modifier. And uh, in, a, in a hierarchy of, of you know, what's secure and what is, is less secure, um, protected is kind of in the middle, right? So we've got private, 
uh, which is highest security. We, we mark our fields as private. Um, we have public, which is lowest security. Uh, we, should, we mark our methods and our classes typically as public. And then we have somewhere in the middle, uh, we have protected at this point, which is uh, in between, uh, so we'll say middle, middle level of security. Um, and how this works, if I go back into my examples from before, you know, where vehicle is our parent class, car is our child class. Let's go ahead and mark another field as protected. And if a vehicle has a color, a number of wheels, we can say it has a Boolean field called has roof. Now, convertible, it's not going to have a roof, which would be false. Or if it has a roof, uh, it's not a convertible, right? It's just a normal vehicle. Um, you can see that has roof field is accessible in the current class. So if we wanted to uh, modify has roof maybe in our, or maybe we just read has roof in our to string. Plus, let me copy a chunk of this out of here. plus has a roof and this is a has roof field and you can see that just like a private variable has roof is accessible within the class itself but where it's uh, different than private you know uh, for example vehicle color is not accessible directly in car so if I wanted to access vehicle color here uh, we would not be able to. We would say plus plus vehicle color. It's saying, hey, wait a minute, vehicle color. You know, it's a private field. It's not visible. Um, that's a no-no. Uh, however, because it is, uh, we have another field that's marked as protected. A protected is is accessible through child classes. So, has roof is a field that we can directly access and uh, the compiler doesn't bark at us. So it is accessible to inherited classes, however it's not inherited, uh, uh, it's not accessible to other classes that don't inherit. So for example, you know, insect does not inherit from vehicle. If I tried to in any one of these methods access it, you know, you notice here it's the same package. You know, it's the same package, but has roof is not accessible to insect because it doesn't inherit from vehicle. So that is uh, the difference uh, between private uh, uh, and protected, and um, as far as access modifiers go.